According to my observations, there are two types of transcendental dream, the primordial and the truly transcendental. Although I yield that there is academic debate about this distinction, whether the primordial is truly transcendental and not merely descendant from the ancestral line, nevertheless, for the sake of simplicity, I shall be including it into this classification. The truly transcendental is the rarest of kind, for it truly stems from the soul or the source or perhaps God, as some religious types would orient. This is the most difficult to comprehend and it is the kind that most benefits from my dream machine analysis since there is no other true way to verify the origin of a dream except from raw data. This is poignant to point out because the dream's origin is an important factor in determining its meaning as there is so much everyday noise in people's lives that they constantly infect the dream stream. And indeed, most of the nightly dreams do consist only of this noise that is simply, to put it crudely, merely mind's defragmentation process. If one was to encounter a transcendental dream, it often shines especially bright during the dream, usually lasting long into the external world upon waking up. As most are aware, the normal defragmentation dreams are fast dissolved and forgotten after the day has started, and this is for the best, for there is no any real use for them. On the other hand, the primordial and the transcendental do carry important messages for slightly differing reasons. It is highly individualistic what this reason is in the end, but it usually has something to do with the person's life trajectory or through line as the academics call it. Such a distasteful snobby term in my opinion, but then again, I am the black sheep of the scientific community, so it is no surprise that I would despise their terminology. But, um, I digress. The exact reason for the appearance of a transcendental dream depends on the individual but it most often is meant to guide the person back to the right path after he or she has been veered off of it, either by internal or external reasons. There is plenty of external reason to steer off course these days, so the person is most often not to blame. What is truly the dreamer's choice, however, is whether to answer this call or to ignore it and continue on the errant path. This, I assess, is the only real, true free will choice one ever has in their life. Much debate is about the nature or existence of free will. I do not think it exists, other than in this special case. Nevertheless, after encountering either a primordial or a transcendental dream, one instantly understands that they come from somewhere else. And so, coming from somewhere else, the origin is the other, and not one's own ego. Although, paradoxically, they do belong to the person's subjective experience, thus being simultaneously part of his or her self. The question therein lies in whether to align oneself with the self, the God, or the ancestral lineage, to align oneself with one's own nature. If one was to be a rebellious spirit, one might reject it or embrace it with especially rigorous vigor answering the call with extra spark in a way as if challenging the gods themselves with pure human spirit. Whatever the case, this choice belongs to the dreamer. The only real choice anyone has in their life.